okay, the war game that you are currently playing, I want us to identify at least one stress point that we can utilize tactically on the table. Now, stress points are places in the narrative of the rules, places in the rule set where things slow down, things get a little bit clunky, things don't quite work, and you can exploit this. This is not interpreting rules as written. This is not trying to be a rules lawyer, or this is not trying to say it works like this, but really it works another way. This is an understanding in wargaming that the rules are a simulation. They're essentially a way for you and I to sit down and and not only immerse ourselves in the narrative of the game, but it's a contract of what we can do and can't do and the interaction of those units. Some rule systems like chain of command are very tight, very, very effective, and other rule sets like Warhammer 40,000 are all over the place. Some like 40K have multiple stress points. Some like chain of command might only have one. So this is a question of the rule set that you're playing, looking and identifying those. So in exploring this, um, the first stress point and the most common stress point is the dice. So there's this idea in a war game, the fog of war or the difference in units. Are you elite units? Are you standard units? Is it a super powerful tank or battle unit or is it just some infantry sending out, holding that objective. The dice represent this ability reflected in the quality of the troops. And and we see this in the two hit, right? In games where if I'm going to shoot at you and I'm a veteran, I might hit you on threes or higher or twos or higher on a D6. In Battletech, we start with the pilot skill and the gunnery skill for various checks. And that starts at a lower number. And then we add up those modifiers on a 2D6. So you see this idea of a D6 in most wargaming systems. That is the first thing to exploit. Now, going back to the mists of time, Warhammer 40,000, a lot of the core mechanics, a lot of the core mechanics are based on 1988, 1980s uh, wargaming tech where it was the D6. We didn't jump into utilizing the D10 or even the D8. We didn't jump into utilizing custom dice as we see with war games of today. And this is what's interesting. I, on a side note, God Tier. Now, God Tier is a skirmish-based game. It's also kind of a war game, but it was completely designed in the here and now. There is no legacy to this game. So God Tier looked and said, as a skirmish game, what doesn't work? How do we fix it? The dice mechanics modified by ways to change and add and remove dice. Let's go with custom dice. We see a game like that that has less stress points simply because it's a more modern game design. Something like Warhammer 40,000 has the appearance of being modern, but it's based on that D6. And, And not all D6 systems are inherently bad, but we see this idea, if I'm elite, maybe I hit you on threes. If I'm brand new to the game and I've recently been conscripted, maybe I need fives and sixes to hit you. If I'm going to damage that battle tank, maybe I need a six. If I have a super powerful weapon, maybe I need a two or higher. It's it's based on the D6. Now, this is the first, this is the first stress point. The D6 just doesn't have enough variation to it. You break through the D6 by rolling lots and lots of D6s. We've seen this in Warhammer 40,000. Just roll lots and lots of D6s. It doesn't matter how powerful that unit is. Um, We get to the point where you see it's not so much about powerful units. It's about how many D6s can you generate. So how many models can you just put down on the table as D6 generators? Uh, Likewise, if you need to break through to something, that's where it operates from that point. Okay, other stress points. Stress points can also be found in initiative systems leading to an alpha strike. Now, I'm borrowing the term alpha strike from Battletech, but certainly it's entered into, um, into kind of this, this wargaming dictionary. In Battletech, when you shoot your weapons, so you're this giant mech, when you shoot your weapons, they generate heat. You've got this machine, they're generating heat, and uh, you have technology, heat, sh- heat sinks to kind of flush out that heat. If you fire more weapons than you have heat sinks, you build heat and things start to happen with your mech. It slows down. 
the internal systems, the computer shuts down, cools off, your ammo could cook off and explode. So there's this idea of firing weapons and managing heat. The alpha strike is where you fire all of your weapons at a target, everything. All 10 weapons at a target, you're going to massively overheat and shut down. But the idea is I'm going to strike you so hard. I'm going to strike you so hard. I'm going to destroy you. Or I'm going to hopefully really, really cripple you really bad. So the idea is I blast you with everything and hopefully alpha strike you, first strike you. So how does this work for stress points? We also see with um, early war game design, the you go, I go system. I set up my toys. This might sound familiar. You set up your toys and you do everything first and I just kind of hang out and sit there and then I I get to go from that perspective. Compare that to some of the modern war game designs. And again, I'm using God Tier as an example because that's what I'm playing right now. There are interrupts. There are you move a unit, I move a unit. You move a unit, I move a unit. There are games like Chain of Command where it's my turn. But I roll command dice based on my command structure. I'll roll three, four, five, or six dice. And based on what I roll on that D6, those are the units that I can activate. So I might not be able to activate everything. And likewise, in my activation, the, uh, my opponent has command dice that they could say, okay, as I'm moving, interrupt. You know, we see this example where if I'm activating one of my tanks, so I'm using a command die on a... On a Five, to activate support. I'm moving that tank down the road. My opponent could spend one of their dice, limited resources, so you have to decide, limited resources. They could decide, you know what? I'm going to do an interrupt. So Fritz has to stop moving his tank. I'm going to move out my anti-tank team and take a shot. Um, On a side note, I've pushed up to my archive here on my YouTube channel some chain of command videos. Not only tactics, but an overview of this amazing, fantastic rule set. You could take any miniatures and play with it. It's primarily um, historical, but we've taken some sci-fi miniatures and mapped it one-to-one, and it is really a lot of fun, a lot of fun to, um, to play. So we see this in modern war game design, interrupts, alternating activations, but any war game that is essentially a you-go, I-go system is extremely flawed because I can strike you before you strike me. You line up all your toys. I line up all my toys. I build a list in such a way that I can exploit that and fire everything with volume of dice or high-powered shots. I remove half your army off the table. It's the start of the game. We, we haven't even started yet, and now you have half an army on the table. So that's um, – or you know, turn two or turn three when we move into range. This idea of an alpha strike is extremely vulnerable. That's a stress point in the rules. That is a stress point in the rules. So those are two examples. And again, every usually looking at the dice and looking at the player turn interaction. How is that set up? Looking at both of those and looking at other examples in your rule system, these places where the simulation slows down a little bit. And, and certainly no rule set is perfect. We're not looking to get beardy. We're not looking to get whack, um, win at all costs. We're not looking to rules lawyer. But it's understanding, hey, these are places where the rules get a little wonky. And uh, certainly if I don't choose to play that way for whatever reason or take advantage of those exploits, I need to be aware of them, especially if I'm going to play competitively or especially if someone shows up with that type of list where you're looking and saying, I know exactly what you're trying to do. We're playing a you-go, I-go system and you're looking to alpha strike me. Okay, what's the counter? How do we counter that? Uh, reserves, um, refused flank, castling up. I mean, there are ways to deal, to counter these rule stress points, but you need to be aware of them. So if you're not going to use them, you need to at least be able to identify them so someone can't use them against you.